Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is an update to a video I made two years ago on how to sum the last n non-blank cells in a range. Based on questions that have been asked, I decided to put up this video. Well, let me show you what the original video looked like. Here you have a data set where I would say it's properly structured in the sense that you have non-blank cells followed by blank cells and you want to sum up the last maybe three non-blank cells easy once you can figure out where the last non-blank cell is then you select three cells including that cell and you can then sum it up and get the answer back then i solved it using you know, an offset and a count function there are many ways to solve in it but that was what i did let me show you what the modified problem looks like in this case you now have the blank cells occurring randomly or haphazardly, if I may say. So how do you then sum up the last three non-blank cells, which in this case for this row would be 33, 35, and, you know, zero. Okay, you need a way to discriminate between blank and non-blank cells. What is that way? Filter is a very good function to use to do that. Once you have the filter function, you can pretty much just feed it with that range and then... It can help you discriminate between blank and non-blank cells. So basically, I'll just use a filter function, you know, and I'll select in this case, you know, the range. And then my include criteria, which would be what helps me to know what to take and what to leave. I'll just say, give me those cells that are not, you know, blank. Basically, that's how I'm going to write it. All right? And now you see what it does. It gives you the cells that are not blank, which means it omits H and it omits what E. So those are the four cells that are not blank. But now you also need to select maybe, I would say, the last three. So how would I do that? A new function, too, is very useful in this regard. It is the take function because take allows you to take, you know, maybe X rows, X columns, and left, from the left, from the right, from the top, from the bottom, depending on, you know, what kind of array you have. So in this case, I can basically just come here and, you know, write a take function over this. I'm going to skip the rows argument because I have just one row, so I'm interested in the columns. And let's say I want to keep this dynamic where I want to use this to control how many, um, you know, attempts I'm summing up. So I'm going to, you know, lock this with F4 and close the bracket. If I write this formula this way, take is going to give me what? The first three, right? So it gives me 52, 0, and 33. But what I'm interested in is the last three, which is 35, 33, and 0. In that case, you just use a negative index here. And once you do that, take starts looking from the right instead of the left. Okay, So you can see the difference, right? 0, 33, 35. Once you have this, you can then wrap this inside of a sum. And once you do that, you're going to have your answer. Okay, sum, and then, you know, you take this down. And you are good. So that is update one. Now the user also asks, what if I want to exclude or ignore, you know, zeros and blanks? Now, if you remember in this case, we included zero in the calculation, right? That's why we had 35 and 33, which is already 68. And this plus zero, obviously, is still 68. But what if we wanted to include, um, exclude rather, you know, the zero? Now, let me take this formula the way we have it, you know, and just come here and put it in here. Right. What somebody is going to say at this point is, okay, Victor, you need to have you know, two criteria in your include argument for the filter. One that checks that it's not blank and one that checks that it is not zero. And my argument would be, oh, you don't need to do that if that cell is truly blank. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. Let me test this. I'll come here and say, test. Is this cell, this one, is it equals to zero? Okay. It tells me what's true. If I copy it to the next, which is now testing that blank cell, you can see that it tells me that, yes, this cell is also equals to zero because the cell is truly a blank cell. So in that case, it means that by using the criteria, you know, equals to zero, I pretty much can handle the case where it is blank. And I will say genuinely blank and when it is zero. So what I'm going to do here is just going to change this instead of saying not equal to blank. I'm just going to change it to not equals to zero. Okay. And you can see that we have a new formula or a new uh, value, right? 120, which is the addition of 35, 33. It skips zero and it includes 52. Okay. And that's how you get it to work. So now the formula ignores both blanks and zeros. This is a good point to break before I go into the next update and ask that those of you who haven't subscribed should please kindly 
you know, hit the subscribe button. Not just that it encourages me, you know, to do more and helps to grow my channel, but it also makes sure that you don't miss out on any beautiful videos that I would put out. And please also turn on the notification bell icon so that you are always informed once I have a video out. Good. With that out of the way, let's go into the next update. The next update here is where the cell that we think is blank is not truly blank. It then poses a challenge. Now, let me take the same formula I used just now here. Let me bring that formula. Uh, let me just copy it here from the formula bar. Let me bring it into this cell here and see what happens. It gives me 68. It's not giving me 120. It was supposed to give me 120. Now it's giving me 68. Why is it giving me 68? Because there is a cell here that is not really blank. Look at this cell. This cell has a blank value, meaning that the output is nothing, right? But there is a formula in the cell that brings about that nothingness. So because there's a formula in the cell, meaning that there are characters in the cell, the cell is not really being seen as truly blank even though the output is blank. Sounds like, Victor, what are you saying? But that's exactly what I'm saying, okay? So now if you test and say, oh, is it blank? Do this, right? It tells you false. Why? Because yes, you can see that there are things in there, even though the output of this expression is blank. So now that's the reason why the expression, the way I wrote it the first time would not work. But when you test and say, oh, this cell, is this cell equals to blank? This way. It now tells you true. Okay, so now I see a way out. So what am I going to do, you know, to get this to work? I'm going to have two expressions, right? The first one is to test. I will test that all these cells, I will check those that are not equal to blank, right? So which is like true, false, true, false. Okay, so you can see not blank. So it shows you four cells. There are four cells that are true, right? This is false. This is false. So those two, you know, are blank. Now, after that, I now need to have another layer, which is where I test that they are not equal to zero. So I test again the same thing, right? I test that they are not equal to zero, okay? So now that I have this, any cell that gives me true, true, you know, as in it means that it doesn't meet any of those two criteria, which means that that cell is not blank and that cell is not also zero. Those are the cells I'm interested in. So what I can do here, you know, is I can just multiply these two expressions. You can add them too, but why I like the multiplication version is that it's going to give me automatically, you know, ones and zeros. Watch this, okay? It's going to give me ones and zeros. And this is the perfect input for the include criteria of the filter. Right. So now anyone that is one, obviously is what I need. Anyone that is zero is not what I need. So I don't need to test in the filter and say, oh, is this equals to one? No. Once you give it this way, one and zero, you know, the filter is going to use it perfectly. So what we are going to do is we are going to come in here back and we are going to modify this formula. So rather than having the first part of not equals to zero alone, we then do the multiplication. Right. And now we'll multiply it by the part where we say the cells and not also blank. So I'm just repeating what I did down there, up here. Okay, so that becomes the include criteria and you close the filter, right? And now you can see that we have a different answer, 120, which is the right answer, which ignores both zeros and blanks. So these two, in addition to 52, you know, that gives you the answer. So you can then take this down and you have what you want. So I can, you know, pretty much delete these three, okay? And we are good. Right, there's just one more thing I want to do before I end this video. Which is the fact that if you've watched most of our videos, you realize that I like to have formulas spill. Because I feel what's the point of having dynamic arrays if I still have to write my formula in one cell and drag it to other cells. What I want to do in this case is to create, you know, a formula expression that spills. So even though the formula is in, you know, one cell, I don't drag down, it spills to the other cells. How do I do that? If you look at this formula, you can see that you are doing the same thing from row to row. If you look at this formula here and compare it with the next, what's the difference? The difference is that here you are doing C3 to H3 and here you are doing what? C4 to H4. It's exactly the same formula. So it means that if you can have something that can figure out, yeah, this is a row and then it just performs that operation on it, then you will be able to get it to work. There's a function that can help us with this, which is the by row function, because you can give by row an array that has multiple rows and multiple columns, and it will perform the operation row by row. So this is what I mean here. I can come in here and let me take this down just 
for argument's sake. Okay, so I'm going to come here and I will start with what by row. And for the by row, I'm going to give it everything, right? Everything. Okay, but it knows that whatever it is, whenever it wants to perform any calculation, it should be done row by row. So meaning that since I have in here row three to row eight, by row is going to perform the operation on row three. It gets an answer, returns it. It's going to perform on, by, on row four. It gets an answer. It's not performing cell by cell. It's performing row by row. That would be a difference between the map function and the by row function. I'll do a video, you know, showcasing the difference. But this is one of those cases where you can't use the map in this sense. Okay. So now this is by row. And then you pull up a lambda, right? And then within the lambda, you create a variable. This variable here is going to represent each row one at a time. So what it means is that when X starts, X will represent the first row, which is what? C3 to H3. When it's done with that, X will represent C4 to H4. When it's done, C5 to H5 and so on. So what it means is that X right now represents, you know, each of the rows. So in this formula expression where I'm calculating all this, I don't need to use C3 to H3. All I need to do is just change this, you know, to X. Which means when I say filter X here, it will start with C3, H3. He knows what to do, right? Change this next one, C3 to H3. It becomes X. Okay, so what X is going to be? X will start up as C3 to H3, C4, H4, C5, H5, all the way to C8, H8. So this one expression, you know, is more or less being repeated row by row. And by row knows that you should perform this row by row. So once you have this, you have one more bracket. That closes the lambda, one more bracket, and that closes the by row. And let me now do my enter. Okay, I have a spill error, of course, because I have data here. Once I get rid of this, you know, and I'm fine. So now I have the same expression, but it's sitting in just what one cell and spills to the other. So if maybe more data was added, I only need to change this eight, you know, to ten, for example, you know, and it will spill to the others. Let me just copy the data here. Just so you see what I mean. Okay. So basically, it's just the formatting that needs to be fixed, which is something that we would really like to have, you know, where uh, in a spilled array, you know, you have the formatting also spilled. So basically, you know, that's how you do it in one cell and have it spill to other cells. So the viral function is very useful for that. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, which I am sure you did, you know, please do hit the like button, you know, and also click to subscribe. For now, I'm out.